Javier Tebas, bienvenido. Muy buenos días. Buenos días. Eh, un placer contar con, con, con su Good morning, Javier. We're delighted to have you here with us today. In which, what moment is the, the La Liga going by now? As an institution, I believe that we are in a good path. But of course, La Liga cannot be only analyzed on its own. We have to analyze it. You have to see the whole football ecosystem. And I believe the football ecosystem, just to use this current expression, is on the move. There, there were dangerous moments in terms of the stock market, also dangerous moments at the level of, at, of the FIFA and at the institutional level. We, in Spain, we have dangerous movements also in the Federation. And at the level of the audiovisual, which are essential for the football clubs, we are living an uncertain moment. We have to be able to answer the question, will the audio value amount, audiovisual amount will increase in the following years? All these triggers, all this ecosystem to be living a moment of convulsion. We have to pay attention to everything that is happening in terms of the institutions, and we also have to analyze the audiovisual and OTTs. The league was mostly centered in terms of the, 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 the TV rights purchase. Give us an example. How was it transformed? How is it to separately sell uh, TV rights? How, how could you join separate? We haven't uh, invented everything. All the main leagues in Europe have had that system. The last one before us was the Italian one in 2010 and other leagues, they grew up due to centralized sales of TV rights. So we have to insist. Portugal, too. It's a uh, harmless debate. I don't think anyone wishes to contest centralized sale. There are other ones follow that path who would not support centralized sale. I'll give you an example. There are several examples. Just to have this brand on the league, we, have, we need the audiovisual rights. They have to be centralized. It's very important to convey an homogenous image of the league. It's a brand at, in the competition. And look in, in 2015 and in Bundesliga a long time ago, and the result, economic results from the international and national sale. These are two different markets. The international market is different. But we tripled the amount of the individual sale. So every club used to sell their rights individually. We have tripled the amounts. These are so many examples, but these are the most important ones. The, the income increase as it had happened for many years, as we mentioned in the previous panel, it was mainly, we mainly addressed the great clubs, Cristiano, Messi, which during all these years they were mentioned uh, in the league. For those people who aren't Spanish, I would like to tell you, during the whole summer, the only thing on the news that was imported in all radios, all the media, social networks, was the, about the possibility that Neymar would come back from Paris Saint-Germain to Barcelona Football Club. And why do you think he is in that club? And why is he so dear to them? It's a demonstration of the great added value of the economic control of the European football. Neymar operation provided by BCG was an operation out of the market. It was impossible to, to, have those, to consider those amounts for a European club, 200 and something million euros for the purchase, and 27 million euros cash, no taxes on the player. 
that it was impossible in any European club that had the uh, income, their usual income. So Paris Saint-Germain, PSG, was negotiated by the league, so this financial issue, because it was impossible to have an operation out of the market. So that was why we negotiated. We denounced it, and we continue to do so because his sponsors weren't real. Everything was inflated, so there were other people. There was Qatar tourism. The question was, it was an operation out of the market because Neymar didn't come back to the football, the, the Spanish football. Why? Because when this something happens out of the market, it's impossible to put it on the market again with prices from out of the market. It's impossible. So it's impossible to have Neymar in Europe in a club, not the state-run club, Manchester City, or, that pays an identical price or able to pay 200 million, not even 115 million, and 27 million to the player. So this is the tangible sample that there are teams that, that undertake uh, operations out of the market. When they do so, they try to place the player in the market. It's impossible because it's, he's out of the market, so teams cannot have operations out of the market. Uh, but Manchester City, well, it's also being negotiated by us. So this process will be out of the market. That's the danger we have to consider. Now, what happens is the obvious. We watch up players who never lose money. Neymar had to earn 27 million cash. In Barcelona, nobody, nobody in the market could pay 27 million cash. It's not possible in the market. But of course, with all the strategies and deceits and financial deceits, he managed to do so. Be why? Uh, so because the league has to be competitive in this case. For that, we need the, the, the medium class and the most modest clubs. They have to be competitive, too, and they have to be given access to the market, too. I believe the success of La Liga is due to the fact that clubs like Salta da Vigo can also have a, a football asset like John. It's economically viable. I think that, do you think these average clubs and these more modest clubs will do, will they be able to maintain this rhythm? Will they have more entries, more revenues due to the television? What do you think, Javier? Well, it's not a question of having greater revenues. This, this moment this is what matters. There are distances between the super European clubs and the medium class, medium low class, as you mentioned. We have to main, they have to be maintained in a way that may, the competitiveness is maintained. Revenues may decrease. What matters is the distance that exists between the teams, the, the uh, average teams. That would be at risk. There are several things that would be at risk from a distance in the long run. What we currently watch, we did the champion reform the reform that has been foreseen, that has been an issue uh, here as of 94, it, uh, to, in order to, it should create a great difference between the great European clubs and the average class of the national leagues. A, a distorting competitiveness that would lead us in the in medium run to have the national competitions disappeared. I'm not going to address that. We are hard, we are very obsessed with the following. Always on, people have to appear on TV. We have grew in two digits. The, the Spanish League, UEFA with champions, La Première, and we are living a momentum. I addressed it in the beginning of my intervention. We are living a momentum. We have to be careful. On TV, we will not grow with two digits, uh, with the exception of some specific markets due to market circumstances. For instance, yeah, there are countries that during the, the last triennium, European countries, where we grew 40%, for instance, in Germany. But England, for instance, in England, uh, they are decreasing 100%. How is it possible with the very same product? This is due to market issues. It, it has to do with the TV operators of every country. All these leads to have different things in every territory. We have to pay attention to what is happening 
because if we don't have good strategies, the amounts of competition in terms of the audiovisual may drop. And that is why league works. We have to draft a correct strategy. But we have a good economic control, so our clubs have to be competitive. But what is what matters for a league to be competitive, even the, the European leagues and champions, we have to know what we will have to do within our organization so that the distance between the greatest and the smallest will be maintained so that the leagues will not gain 100 points or the Manchester City earning 97 or Liverpool. That is what matters. Manchester City always being the leader, that would not worry me that much if it gains for 85 and not by 97. This is what we should pay attention to. Javier, uh, we heard that the, the European of, uh, Association of Clubs could have revenues of 1,000 million euros in future contracts. What do you think? What do? You, what is your belief? Well. Projects have been addressed, reformed. So many barbarities have been inferred in this regard. This leads me to think the following. During these months, these months were very confusing in, in Europe. I don't know they were in Portugal too, but they were actually were in, in Spain with this reform issue, UEFA and ECA. We have UEFA, then they presented ECA. Uh, it's uh, reforms that are presented like, like this. So many incredible things and barbarian things were mentioned. I'm worried because one of the analyses said that there will be 20 billion euros of revenues at a certain competition. This implied revenues of all the individual rights in the world football in competitions of, of the club. So, and I said it's impossible. They would that would undermine the national competitions. But all this leads me to reflect upon the following. It's important to open a period for debate. We have to debate on this governance, football governance in general. Firstly, I believe that the UEFA decision and, and the pre, and from the presidents to, to remove the project, and there, there was, a, there was a, a, the debate on the, September 1st was very intelligent, it was, was correct, just to be able to face, be, to confront what was happening. That meeting was suspended, wasn't it, Javier? Yes, it was suspended because the project was eliminated. Of course, what happened? So that what, what led that project to stop? What was the reflection that, in my opinion, UEFA should undertake, and the leagues too, so that we would be presented with the project in March, in uh, model change, champion model change. Why was this opposition to such an extent, to such a great extent, that during a recent federation meeting, we, the league no longer supports the project. No league, I don't know any European league that would support the project. This shows that the, the, the scope of the decision-making process and the scope of studies to solve the European problems is deceived, equivocal. They were not able to find a reform. They present, those that presented this reform project in European football. They don't know what was happening in European football. The opposition at such of a great extent, they should probably be elsewhere thinking. We have to think and see what should change as regards this issue. Do you think that the, the, the smaller clubs, do you think the smaller clubs should have greater representativeness in other international clubs or that is not necessary? No, I think the, the error is committed when we give great importance to the great clubs. That's the first mistake. The, greater, the greatest clubs, this is the first mistake. For instance, Sereca, the great European clubs, they, have, they, are, they are given too much importance. So they almost uh, hold, they almost held the UF as hostage. 
I don't know how it happens in Portugal. In Spain, we 37% of GDP creates a, a lot of indirect jobs, but not the, only the great clubs, all the clubs, all the greatest competitions, clubs. La Liga in Spain, the Liga in Portugal, certainly in Italy, and in France, the football industry is created. It exists due to the football leagues, and, and the European uh, competitions share it at the same level of the national leagues. This is a change that has to exist in terms of governance. The national leagues, as part of the football industry, just like UEFA, should be equivalent and debate and reach a consensus in order to find out what's the right path for European football and not hanging from a UEFA superior decision in the sky. UEFA defines this can damage here or there. We have to change this governance model. It, this does not mean we have less or more power. What I mean is that football, European football is not the same as it were 15 years ago. Premier League, La Liga, no, no, no. It's not the same compared to 15 years ago. The money is not the same. UEFA, in terms of industry, is not the same as it were 15 years ago. We talked about a very strong industry in Europe, but we should regulate it, and it's different. You have to, stop, you have to seek for solutions in that part of Europe that is impoverishing. The, the, the football industry is impoverishing on that part of Europe. And the, uh, so the Spanish league ranks first with Budden's league, the greatest in Europe. So we were the first ones to ask ourselves, uh, how can we balance this European model we create? Without the existence of governance norms, if we don't we have not only we have to reach a consensus at the level of greatest leagues with you ever to find out where we are headed to then we shall be in conflict again regardless of the projects for new competitions that might be presented because what we have acknowledged in the last months is that most of the leagues and most of the federations did not suggest any new competition models they were not proposed why because it was the effects are very dangerous. As we stand now in economic terms, what we have to do so that the money reaches much more, many more places? Would you say that in the, in the near future there could be a Champions League, a semi-close, if I can use this term, that could guarantee the presence of the great clubs? What do you think? So there, there could be a second layer. That is what was aimed in the first place. 32 belong to the champions and 20, 25 fixed playing on a yearly basis, going up and down, and, and the national leagues could only have four. It was a semi-closed competition. Out of the 25, would have 15, the 15 greatest clubs of Europe, always. Now look at the risks. And why was this decrease? Because there was a backlash on the part of the European football, both at the level of the league and on the part of federations, against this type of projects. So what is the path we should follow? This, is, this means killing the, the national industries from Spain, Portugal, and Holland. This is not the right path to be followed. This is another message I, will try, I have tried to convey. Whoever believes the European football obtains a solution, changing the format of competition, as has been suggested, is absolutely wrong. This is not the right path. We should not follow it. This, we should try to find a solution for European football. If you wish to do so, first of all, we have to change governance. If you want to restructure the European structure in Europe, Leagues and national industries have to uh, have greater participation within the scope of the decision-making process regarding the change we wish in Europe in every sense, competitions, economy, etc. Javier, let's now talk about La Liga in Spain. What is happening? We have widely addressed, and you are fully aware that sometimes we we mention uh, as, if, uh, as if it were trifles uh, of China as a great external market. But we feel that during the last months, 
that happen good things for La Liga. How's the market? How's the Chinese market? How's the famous Chinese market? Is it higher or low? I think there are novelties here. Well, I have already explained before. When I mentioned be, beware of the, the amounts of the audiovisual rights, I, I was referring to Europe. When I say Europe, I mean where the greatest leagues are almost at their peak. There are other markets absolutely different, like the United States or China. And we deal with them differently. China is one of them. For Spain, China is ranked second in terms of revenues obtained. The first one is Spain, obviously. The second is the United States with 145 million euros. And the third, China, with 100 million euros. And what is happening in China? Well, this is, an obje this is objective data. The, in the inhabitants, thousands, I came from China in August. I go to China several times a year. I know the country well. I know what is happening in terms of the audiovisual sector. Otherwise, I would not be at the league. So I know what is happening there. What is happening? There, they have a very interesting effect there, a very interesting effect. Look, the, stra the, the market is strange. The champions acquired the rights of 170 million euros, I believe. They did not close the contract with those who had adjudicated it. They had to go to the market again after six months. And from that amount, it, it uh, decreased to 70 in six months because there was a problem with the company. Some of them disappeared, etc. But uh, in general terms, what is happening in China now? The, wor the world of paid television is uh, rising, is different from Europe. In China, free of charge TV was very strong and in Europe. There were a few phases. I don't know if you recall, 30 years ago, it was an open and free of charge TV. Then it became paid with the operators, just like telephone operators. Now we have OTTs. But they, they are directly stepping from free of charge TV into the OTT world, directly. There are no campaigns. There are very, there's a scarce number of campaigns for a country set, just like China, a lot of millions, but for China, scarce. The, the OTT world is increasing. In China, we need a, a government license, differently from Europe. There are 10 or 12 who buy the rights, but then up to 12 months ago, they bought the rights and issued uh, free of charge OTT. Access was provided free of charge. They were funded by means of advertising. But as of 20, 12 months ago, they are ch they are, it is being charged just like Netflix or Fox, etc. For instance, the Spanish La Liga charges 30 years a year. La Première 32, a bit less. This is a new phenomenon. And uh, yeah, or so, we could, the Chinese market will have to pay. And it has reached that point. Now they pay. So what's the ceiling that should be considered? How many Chinese will actually pay to watch their local football? Of course, which increases. At, in, the, in terms of revenues immensely, and the European football. How much the Chinese will play? We're talking about a country of one, one about 1,200 million inhabitants, because the change we are witnessing in China for the next years, as has already been addressed here, it's difficult to foresee everything, but the truth is we shall witness a very important moment and an important change in China. Actually, the Chinese League, the European Leagues, have to be consolidated, just like the Portuguese. As the European Leagues are consolidated, in China, the same has to happen. Nothing is consolidated in the Chinese market, but in a few years, there will be a huge increase 
in terms of this market, the audiovisual market. We are analyzing the whole uh, football landscape and the, the present of a Chinese football like you hey in the in the Real Club Sportivo from Spain. This brings an added value, doesn't it? Yes, because in the OTT world, now we talked about OTT in China. Everything is digitalized, so we are fully aware of those who are who, uh, watching. We have objective data now with OTT. And now what about the match that was widest seen during the last season of OTT? was the match where Ley scored the first goal, Villarreal. So this explains it. We came from China recently. This explains it. We already signed it with the government, the Chinese government. We have been with the Chinese government, with the, with the Chinese league. They changed the bylaws due to the agreement we did with them, a campaign trying to have professional Chinese players of a high rank level could, so that they could trade so they, that they could apply in Chinese in the Spanish clubs and uh, attend competitions as of the Portuguese uh, Liga Real double uh, uses uh, compared to the classic so it is important to have local players to be able to grow and be inserted in society. And that is why we work along these lines um, in China and other countries. Uh, we need to grow. And one way of growing is being close to the local football. We don't want to be more important than the Chinese league. We are second in China and after the Chinese league, which will grow a lot, not artificially, like it grew now, up to now. Uh, it has grown um, uh, at the expense of the private um, sector, but in terms of uh, broadcast, uh, the uh, Spanish League went to be the second one, the strategy that we developed. But China is a very special market. Uh, well, Javier, a last question, because the time is running. We don't have much more. The last uh, comment, uh, uh, but uh, it's very interesting in Spain. We should not multiply the hourly bands on the, the bandwidths on these days with uh, football games. A quick comment on this aspect, uh, and can we solve this quickly? Well, this is a debate uh, in terms of the TV operators. Um, um, but, uh, well, uh, football 20 years ago was so beautiful when in the afternoon everybody was together and they watched or heard uh, on the radio and everything was explained. But that was 20 years ago. There were two channels. Uh, but doing that nowadays is throwing money down the drain. If we don't want to do this, then what we need to do is the more games we have together or at the same time, the worse it is. Um, uh, a lot of people say, yes, four or five games and do that, yes. But it's very important uh, in terms of uh, the uh, hours. Um, for example, now with uh, this uh, uh, heat in summer, we have a problem and we need uh, uh, games closer to one another. Uh, we need those uh, 10 hourly bandwidths. Uh, but when one game is on the same time as another game, we have a decrease. in terms of national audience and internationally as well. Um, during these these days, uh, with these trips, um, uh, fruit of the conventions uh, with the Federation, and we weren't allowed to play on Monday, the big problem is how are we going to solve this uh, problem of not having simultaneous games? Um, uh, and uh, this is valid for China, United States, France. Um, that is where we are more interested in, uh, uh, in France, the uh, United States is our first uh, market and China our second. So I have the obligation to go to these countries and explain what is happening in Spain. But um, uh, everybody's big concern was not so much not to have a uh, football on Mondays um, because the Europeans are worried about that. But the Chinese are saying, what, are we going to have uh, games in simultaneous, uh, one on the top of the other? Uh, the, the best solution, of course, uh, is for us to have uh, our, uh, the, the games uh, divided not to have simultaneous games. And that aspect is very important. Uh, and I think that for us, uh, this is one of the, the key things for the increase in terms of uh, broadcasting rights uh, that we've seen over the last few years. So 
so uh, direct, clear and concise, and a series um, of uh, pertinent issues uh, that you are able to answer. And, and as a journalist, uh, um, I must say that uh, we weren't disappointed. So an applause. Thank you very much.